Starting this year every month, I'm going to interview an artist in the Billings area, just show their uh, studio space, talk about their processes. And my first interview is this Thursday, and I realized that I have not done a proper studio tour of my new studio space. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know, the very first video that I did where I talk about why I quit my full-time job as a business development manager, I gave, gave you my original studio tour and part of the studio was inside, part was outside, part was back here. It was divided up into three to five different sections around the property and I had to carry pots you know, between three and 10 pots at a time up and down like three different staircases in order to get them completely, you know, through the whole process. So now the studio is busy enough. The business has grown enough that, um, I really needed to move all of my processes into one space. And fortunately, Jeremy, my husband was, generous enough to let me completely take over the garage space. In addition to the fact that now my work is my work, it's completely separate from my home stuff and it makes it a lot easier to uh, differentiate between work time and home and family time. The main things I had to think about when converting this garage from a garage space to a studio space were um, heating the building, water in the building, electricity, and uh, storage and then work places you know where, where am i going to build stuff so let's start with heat which right now this time of year in montana feels like the most important before i put drywall up i made sure that there was insulation all along the walls um, there was already some insulation here i just left the old insulation and then i put new insulation where there wasn't any and then put the drywall up um painted it and at first I left the ceiling uninsulated just because by the time I was done doing the walls, to be honest with you, I was kind of over hanging insulation. And because of my height, um, I'm five, four, I would have to get to like the tallest rung of the ladder in order to hang the insulation in the ceiling. And it just did not feel safe doing that project on my own. But since it's gotten really cold, I'm so grateful um, my husband and my father-in-law came in here and they finished the insulation in the ceiling for me. So that's super awesome. So we thought about all different types of heat for the studio. We looked at propane, we looked at kerosene heaters, um, we looked at electric heaters and you know, even, Honestly, electricity isn't that expensive, but we figured out it was going to be, you know, a hundred to two hundred dollars a month to keep electric heaters going full time out here. And then the propane ended up being, you know, like a dollar fifty an hour to run propane heaters. It would be one thing if I could just run heaters in here while I'm in the space, but because I store my glaze out here, I store my clay out here. It has to be above freezing at all times. Well, our neighbor across the street, um, he has some resources where we can get extremely inexpensive, if not free, wood. Uh, so he has a lot of different connections that he's built up over the years, and he's been generous enough to share that information with us um, because we're such good friends. And so we decided, since there's already a fireplace in here, a wood stove, just to the heating the... Um, studio with wood stove would be the most cost effective. So I usually, uh, before going to bed, if it's really cold outside, I'll come out, build a big fire in here and get the temperature up pretty high. And then by the time that fire burns out, um, it starts getting cool. And then in the morning, um, it's like maybe 39 degrees, 40 degrees in here. And then I can come out and start another fire. And then the other 
cool thing that helps raise the temperature in here uh, by like one or two degrees at least is this little radiant fan that we got and the hotter the the hotter the stove is the faster the fan goes and it's just a nice way to keep the air moving inside the studio and then back here you can see uh, this is the garage door took strips of insulation and then glued them inside a gigantic tarp and then we stapled them to the door for the winter time i'll take that down once it gets nice outside because it is awesome to have this door open and uh, have the sunshine and a little breeze coming through in the spring oh my gosh I absolutely love it and uh, I ordered a screen for it so when it gets nice out I can put the screen up have the door open and I don't have to worry about for those of you who don't live in Montana the yellow jackets can get crazy in Montana so yeah I have to have a screen up because otherwise the yellow jackets would be in here just bombarding me Plus, a screen provides just like a smidge of privacy. You know, you can still see through it, but it's not, I'm not like right out there in the open to the alleyway. So next I want to talk about electricity. When I first renovated the garage, the garage had electricity, but somehow in the negative, below negative, frigid temperatures, the electricity um, to all of the outbuildings has gone out and our wiring is underground, we just, it's impossible to problem solve it without getting uh, an electrician out here to do a major project in the middle of winter. So we, you know, as you know, if you have a studio, sometimes you just have to deal with the situation that you've got and make the best of it. Well, it turns out through kind of dealing with the situation of no electricity, I think we came up with a better way to Get electricity to the shop so for now we literally just ran an extension cord from the back of the house in here we used to have um, we used to have halogen lights in here and it always was a little bit dim like not quite lit enough but I just never seemed to get enough light in here so instead we went to Costco and they had LED shop lights for 20 bucks a piece total seal and here there they are and you can see like there is a ton of light in here I mean and the LED shop lights take hardly any electricity at all so things I need electricity for in here lights mainly um, occasionally I need to plug in a drill for you know to hang a shelf or do something like that and then I've got my my mixer here for when I'm mixing up new batches of glaze and occasionally because especially if I'm in here for like 10 hours at a time working on a big project I like to throw on Netflix or Amazon or Pandora or something so I've got a TV and speakers in here and that's just, I've just got a little Roku. So believe it or not, believe it or not, the wireless from the house reaches out here. Shocks the heck out of me, but it does. So I can throw on Netflix, watch a few episodes of something, have that playing in the background while I'm throwing or glazing or whatever. So I think that's probably the biggest power draw is the television. And then for the times it gets to be like, 110 degrees outside I do have an air conditioner in here most of the time I'm fine with just like open doors and a fan and that keeps it cool enough uh, in the summertime that was my experience anyway but it's really nice to have the option to cool it down a little bit if it gets to be ridiculously hot in the summer but uh, Jeremy and I are in the process of doing the math and I'm pretty sure that we can run this building on solar next year. So one of our big projects for the spring is gonna to be to convert this building completely to solar electricity. 
and that'll be awesome. So I'll do a video when we start that project. I'll walk you through all of the math that we had to do to figure out like how many hours can I run the television based on how many battery, you know, batteries I have in the battery bank and what size of solar panels we get and all that sort of thing. So that that should be a fun project. And I'm sure tons of people would love to put their garage on solar. So free electricity. Yeah. All right. So now on to water. Um, honestly, water was the simplest thing to solve. The idea of like digging up the yard to run plumbing out here uh, horrified and terrified me. Like maybe in the future, but I just don't want a project that big. And uh, so I came up with a different solution. I took a 50 gallon tank, holding tank. It's got a lid on it. And bef um, I mean, I'll eventually get a shop sink for it. But for right now, um, I just use this bucket and fill it up underneath here every morning. And then put it back, um, put it back over on top of the stove. And then by the time I get the fire going, get my clay divided, you know, kind of get everything ready and going in the shop, do all my prep work. The water is usually warm enough, uh, warmed up enough to use. And if I, if I need water right away, I just go fill up a bucket from the house. I bring it out with me of warm water to get started. And then I fill it up from the 50 gallon tank as I go. The one thing I need next winter that I didn't do this winter, so I just found a spot out in the yard where I'm dumping my wastewater like a gravel spot. I found a little pit where that I made. So I think what I'm gonna do is get another uh, 50 gallon tank and one for glaze, and then I'll dispose of my clay wastewater in one tank, my glaze wastewater in another tank. All the sediment will fall to the bottom, it'll settle. And then in the, in the spring, I can dispose of the water on the top of those tanks and then recycle everything that went to the bottom. So yeah, that should work. Okay, so now just a quick tour of the space. I'll start at the back here. Um, lots of my furniture are on rollers. Yeah, so like I can move them around uh, and change the space as I need to. But this is my slab roller. Homemade slab roller, Jeremy made for me. Um, you can get those plans in a historical edition of the Ceramic Arts magazine. And uh, if you are interested in those plans, send me a private message and I'll locate those plans and send them to you. And then over here is like my office space. So, you know, I store my bags. And then here, like hot glue gun, made Montana stickers, and these are all my thank you notes. Here's where I normally keep all my boxes, but I'm kind of short right now after Christmas. And then my toolbox down here where I keep all my miscellaneous tools. And then next to that is my drying shelf. So I've hooked it up with plastic on each shelf so that I can, and then there's plastic on the sides too, so that I can really control the drying times for the different projects. This is where I do all of my throwing. And clay storage is down here. And then um, when I have extra boxes, they go underneath this table. This is the table that um, I usually use for drying pieces uh, if I need to put handles on things or um, work on the bases. This is the table. I just like the height of it. My neighbor Gary across the street made this table for me. Uh, he used to be a professor up at MSU Billings, or EMC it was at the time, and they were throwing out all the old science tables. And so this used to be, you know, those uh, black painted tables with the holes in the middle where the gas lines used to come through. So we filled those in and stripped it down for me and made this awesome work table for me. Got some 
books and such up there. Back here is just like a regular storage shelf. I've got my drone and um, bats and work boards, plaster slump molds, just miscellaneous tools. Plastic is in here. And then the glazes are down here. I just keep those in five gallon buckets from Lowe's. And then I've got other glazes up here. The way I access those glazes is I just set the step ladder up and climb up on top of the shelf. So just across the uh, way over here, I've got the shed with the kilns in it. So it's just a short walk back and forth. The uh, kiln room's a bit of a mess right now because we're rearranging stuff. I think we're gonna move one of the kilns over to the studio. But here, I've got a big oval and three small electric kilns. All right, so that's it. That's pretty much the studio tour. And stay tuned in a few days. I don't know how soon I'll get it edited, but I'm gonna try to get it edited as soon as possible. But stay tuned. Uh, our first artist interview is gonna be coming up next on the channel. And I'll leave, I'll leave that artist as a surprise for next time, so. Now, if you notice, Check out all the other videos. Don't miss any. Just watch them. If you don't like them, thumbs down. If you like them, thumbs up. If you like my costumes, thumbs up. That was awesome. <laughs>